this idea, man. You're a couple days out from the world title fight. You're out there dancing, doing some moves yeah. out there. What's, what's, the, what's the feeling like for you right now? Yeah, feeling's the same. You know, each and every time I prepare the same, which is why I get the same result. And I'm dominant from start to finish in each and every one of my fights. So that's how I feel. I, this, is, this is just part of the show, you know. Nothing changes. Once we step out there in front of those lights, I'm going to be the same guy. Well, the show got a little wild for a bit with, with Colby over there. <laughs> I mean, what was your impression of him coming in crashing your workout? No, I thought it was a bum. Like, I looked over and it looked like a bum on the street that bought one of those little, you know, little replica belts. and Because he had the, what, what, some hat on too, some little trucker hat. I was like, oh, is that a bum? Then I had to look closer and saw, I saw it. There's a reason it's roped off and you're outside the ropes. You could have been inside, you're outside. So stay on the outside and keep making noise. That's I don't really care about that. You feel like it was over the line for him to come try to maybe steal your spotlight a little? No, no, that's what you expect for guys like that. You know, I don't care. If, uh, you know, after I'm done with Tyron Woodley, if he plays his cards right, he has to beg me now. Because five times I've been offered that fight. I've accepted all five, he's declined all five. All you guys know that. He's declined it, so he has to beg me for that fight now. The fight that you have in front of you, I wonder, has it, has it gotten personal? I mean, this has always been your mission, but after the press conference especially, I mean, has this turned into a, a personal fight for you? Oh, for me, no. I, you know, I, I'm a classy guy. I, I, you know, you might say whatever you want to say to sell the fight, but, you know, genuinely, personally, I have no beef with Tyron Woodley. Um, I, I like the guy. I've hung out with him before, so. I have no beef with him. If he's gotten personal with it, that's on him. That's only something that's going to slow him down. I don't fight personal. Every time I fight each and every one of my opponents, it's not personal. Once we sign on that dotted line, though, <laughs> we got to take care of business. So Saturday night is going to be all business with Woodley. Is it personal with Ben Askren? Have you, have you run into him? No, it's not personal. Yeah, I've seen him a couple of times. It's not personal. This is the thing is, you know, all these guys are going to say what they want to say to kind of try to get into my spot, get into my position. I understand it. And on Askren's part, it's a little different because he's just a troll. You know, there's a reason a lot of people relate to him because a lot of trolls are the people behind the computers at home that eating donuts that look like Ben Askren, to be honest. They got the hair like him, they got the gut like him. So, you know, they relate to him. So it's just all fun and games. It's not personal. Warren, why do you think Colby came to your workout and not, and not Woodley's workout? Because Woodley is, is the champion coming to this fight and you're, you're the challenge. <laughs> Goes to say who he's worried about. And you heard him, he's saying, oh, Woodley's going to beat you. That's what he hopes is going to happen. The one thing he does not want to happen is for me to get that belt because I'm the fight he's ducked five times. Now, what happens when I get the belt? Something he wants. He's fucked. What would that fight look like? Get the impression that he might have lost his spot, that even if you do win, that you won't even that he, he might have lost his spot. Oh, that's long gone. There's a reason he was outside the ropes. No, I mean, like, even if you win, they won't even give him a title shot against you, that he's fallen down. He has fallen down because I, I feel like, let's be honest, if, if Askren does what he's supposed to do and gets past Lawler, I mean, you know, he has, if he wants to fight for the title, I feel like now he's put himself in a bad situation to where he has to kind of fight Askren or, or whoever is next in that mix. And I'm not forgetting, see, all these guys are just talking about the hot, the, the newest, hottest things. And you're part of that too. You guys talk about the new, oh, Askren's here, you're giving him all this credit. I, I understand, he's a tough wrestler. He's not a fighter, he's a wrestler, a very good wrestler. But that's it. Are the people still gonna be behind him? There's a certain products that UFC fans expect from UFC fighters. Even anyone flipping at home, there's a certain product they expect. When you step out there, they wanna see you bang a little bit, at least a little bit, then mix in all the skills. He can't do any of that, none of that. He can take you down, hold you down, and, and smother you in the face with a pillow till you either tap out or you know the ref pulls them off. But what are fans gonna feel like when they don't get that product they expect from UFC fighters? And you know what? I don't mind. I will campaign for the Kobe coming to the fight. I'm the fight he's ducked five times. I will campaign for that fight. I want that fight. And that's just thanks for building that fight. You're building it. He's building it, so thank you. Oh, what does that fight look like when you two actually do fight each other? Me and Kobe? Yeah. Oh my god. It would be like uh I would say you ever seen a, a, a little chihuahua just just be just muffled up by a mastiff. I I think that's what it's gonna look like. Well, this week for you, playing Tyrant Woodley, but also kind of fighting a war of words with Ben Askren, who is 
really his friend and teammate. It's like kind of an annoyance that it's almost like a two-on-one in a certain aspect as far as the talk goes. I, I, that's what they're trying to do, but I don't care. I'm not worried about that. I didn't get into the sport thinking, oh man, I might have to deal with this guy, can't deal with this or that. No, I don't care. The only thing I care about is the belt. Being the champion, being at the top of the sport, the pinnacle of it, at my moment right now, that's the only thing that I care about. If George St. Pierre was still the champion, I would be gunning for George. If Kobe's the champion, I would be gunning for Kobe. If this is not, I didn't get into this because, oh, I don't like this guy or I hate this guy. There's only one guy, really, to be honest, it's Kobe that I really don't care about. But I don't care. They can all make that noise all they want to, but all I want is that title. And Tyron is in my way, and on Saturday night, I have to run right through him in order to get that belt. If you win, if you win Saturday and Astrid beats Robbie on Saturday, Usman versus Astrid is probably the fight that everyone's going to want to see. What do you think about that? Pertaining. Like I mentioned, let's see the product that he puts out. Who is going to want that guy to be champion when he can't throw a punch? It's not a UFC fighter. A UFC wrestler, He's not a fighter. People want to see a fighter that can fight. Let's see the product that he puts out. And like I said, we got this clown over here as well that I can beat up. You know, once I'm the champion, you know, it's infinite possibilities. You've got Santiago Pontenibo over there that you know I can take care of as well. So Wonder Boy, I mean, there's there's tons of there's endless possibilities. What do you make of what they continue to say that you're afraid that he's No, he's saying that because he was afraid. And this is the difference between us. And each and every time he keeps saying that, oh, he, I don't see him possessing any skill that the last three of my opponents possess. Each of your last three opponents, yeah, they had a different skill. You had a karate guy, you had a, a submission guy, you had, you know, the, the other, you know, the Muay Thai guy. Like, yes, but how did those guys all do? They all lost. I don't, I'm not, I'm not the best striker in the world. I'm not the best wrestler in the world. I'm not the best kickboxer in the world. But when it comes to mixing it up, confusing you and breaking you mentally, I do that better than anybody in the welterweight division right now. Has it, has it been difficult to remain singularly focused on this game with all these personal emotions and you know, people calling you out, talking trash? It's been hard to, to, to stay focused on the title and not these personal little conflicts. No, no, not at all. I'm not worried about all that. I'm not worried about them. My job is to go out here and get that belt. That's the one thing that I set out to do, and on Saturday night, I'm going to be the new champion. Being a commentator for Titan FC, does that give you a little bit of an advantage in how you look at your own fights, just you know, being able to break down fights and opponents? Yeah, I think that part of my success is from the start of my career. I like to watch my fights. Oh, man, you know, I didn't do this very well. I didn't fake very well. So I've been doing that from the start, and being a commentator for Titan FC just gives me a, a different perspective to be able to watch the fight, break down what I think fighters should do at this moment in the fight. So, you know, it's all been... All in all, been great. I'll see you guys Saturday night as the new welterweight champion of the world.